Sideline Dissonant Podcast, coming to you from YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Facebook. Follow me on Twitter, at the Brad Whitaker. I am the Brad Whitaker, coming to you from somewhere in western Kansas. Saw the Patriots-Broncos game last night. Great fan base, by the way, in Denver. Uh, certainly th- plenty of the uh, drunken redneck types that like to throw snowballs at Patriots fans. There are definitely plenty of those in the crowd, but for the most part, Broncos fans are lovely people, and they're very well programmed during games. They know how to cheer for their defense and shut up between plays and let the offense... You know, as someone who's a Patriots fan and has been to a lot of Patriots... Not a lot of Patriots games, been to a few Patriots games in New England, uh, the fan bases work differently in Denver... They are much louder for their defense, and certainly Patriot fans go crazy on third down, but it's Patriot fans are used to offensive success, so they generally cheer that on more than anything. Uh, it's fun to see a really committed fan base like Denver. I'm, but I'm going to talk about the Patriots a little bit and the New York Giants. What a surprise they've been. I said a few weeks ago they are not a real 8-3 and three football team, that's when they were 8-3, and three. and then they lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers, went 8-4, and four. and I said, see, they're not very good, but they've beaten two good teams in a row now, they beat Dallas last week at home, nobody saw that coming, and they beat Detroit yesterday, and this is a good Detroit Lions team, great offense, they, uh, I believe, held them to single digits, I'm, I'm doing this podcast on the road, so I have zero notes or anything, I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, but last night as I was watching the Patriots uh, squeezed by the Denver Broncos despite Tom Brady having a bad game, and their defense really came alive. I'm seeing a lot from the Patriots that I haven't seen from them in about a decade. Uh, their defense, look, they won the Super Bowl two years ago in part because of their defense. Tom Brady has never won a Super Bowl with a weak defense. The two that he lost to the New York Giants, he had fairly mediocre defenses. But the the one he won two years ago, they won because the Patriots had very strong defensive backs, especially at the corner position. Uh, but it's a different defense now. I mean, they're certainly strong at safety and at corner now, but what makes the Patriots' defense really great, and they're a top two or three defense just these last few weeks, uh, is their linebackers and their defensive tackles. And when you have consistent play from your linebackers and your defensive t- tackles, that is m- much a much wider security blanket than having great cornerbacks like they did two years ago. So, uh, And we know the Patriots' offense is great. Uh, they don't have Gronk out there, but this is the best offensive line Tom Brady has had since uh, he took over for Drew Bledsoe. And uh, what we what we saw last night, Brady against the Broncos, certainly Brady struggled. Statistically, it was his worst game of the season, and he had a terrible first quarter. I don't even think he completed a pass the first quarter. But for the most part, the Patriots ran the ball 39 times yesterday. They're really focusing on establishing the running game late in the season. They're also using the running backs well uh as receivers, they're often splitting their halfbacks. They line up their fullback, uh, Devlin, on the outside many times. Uh, and uh, that kind of mitigated the effects of the Denver defense. And you can tell that offensive line, they've, they've stayed healthy and they've come a long way since just last year when I think Brady got hit 20, 25 times. Mostly from Vaughn Miller and DeMarcus Ware. Patriots look to be in good shape. And I really don't see any team in the AFC challenging them, especially after they beat Denver yesterday. I think they're one win away from clinching home field advantage. And, you know, I like the Kansas City Chiefs, but they needed to win that one against Tennessee. Titans are going to the playoffs hot if they can somehow squeeze in there, but I don't see them going into Foxborough and winning. Uh, Oakland, perhaps, uh, they're identical to the Patriots in a lot of ways, the Oakland Raiders are, but uh, can they win at Foxborough in cold weather? Is Derek Carr the same quarterback in cold weather? We still don't really know that just yet. He struggled in Kansas City, and he won yesterday in San Diego, but we know that's not a cold weather environment. And who else in the AFC? Pittsburgh, 
Maybe, probably not. They don't have the defense to contend with the Patriots. Uh, any other teams? I don't think the Broncos are going to make it at this point. It, the Patriots have perhaps the easiest path to the Super Bowl since they went 16-0 and in the regular season. Now, the team they played that year is the New York Giants. Like I said, just weeks ago, I was not buying into the New York Giants, and I still hate their offense. And I'm sure New York Giants fans will agree They've been trying to build that offensive line for six years now. And I know everyone thinks Eli Manning is a bipolar quarterback, and he doesn't always... Consistency is not something Eli does well, but I think he's been... He's never really had a great offensive line, ever. And the best O-lines he's had is when he's been in the Super Bowl, and he's had great defenses to back it up. Now... Does he have a great offensive line this year? No. Does he have a great running game? No. But the running game's getting better. He's got great receivers. Beyond Odell Beckham, he's not their only receiver. I don't care what people say. Uh, Very talented receiver, nonetheless. But New York's defense, you know how in baseball, generally these successful teams in Major League Baseball are the ones that draft and develop position players, and then they spend their money on pitching. Those tend to be the teams that succeed. Look at the Chicago Cubs this past year. Most of their position players were drafted and developed, but they spent the big money on pitching and they won the World Series. The New York Giants have always had a similar strategy. Draft and develop offensive players and then spend your money on defensive players, which is just what they did this past offseason. Um, they added some pieces in the draft to that defense. Eli Apple is great, uh, but... We've seen the New York Giants defense evolve from zero pass rush to the most dangerous pass rush in the league just in the last eight weeks, and you have to give them credit. What we're seeing from the New York Giants is analogous to a lot of the Tom Coughlin teams, uh, especially the ones that got hot late in the season and went to the Super Bowl. Now, do I am I picking the New York Giants to make it to the Super Bowl? If I had to put money on it, I would say no, because the Dallas Cowboys, in all likelihood, unless they lose the next two and the Giants win the next two, they're going to clinch the NFC East and home field advantage, Uh, meaning the New York Giants will have to be a wild card team and win, make their way through the postseason entirely on the road. Now, they've done it before. They did it one of the seasons where uh, they won the Super Bowl. I think that was back in, in 2007. So they're certainly capable of it. And if you look at how they match up to certain teams, look, we know they can beat the Dallas Cowboys. They've beaten the Cowboys twice this season. They clearly have Dallas' number. Uh, It was a close game in week one, but they won in Dallas. I think they could go in there again and win. Uh, What are some of the other teams that could challenge them? Uh, I would think the Washington Redskins could be a tough matchup for the New York Giants. Uh, But that matchup wouldn't happen until the conference championship if it did. Uh, So the Giants get kind of a break there. You could argue Washington has a top three offense in the NFL. Uh, Defense is eh. But New York Giants, the thing about the New York Giants is they can win games with their offense scoring under 20 points. And there's few teams in the league that can actually do that. Uh, Seattle is an, is another team that could give the New York Giants fits, but the problem with Seattle is their offense has been so inconsistent all season. Uh, they still kind of have an offensive line by committee. That's Pete Carroll's strategy. That's a team that devotes most of its personnel, most of its financial personnel toward its defense and spends very little offensively. I just... Uh, could Seattle win at home against the New York Giants? Of course they can, but the real question is the Green Bay Packers. I think this is a team that's getting hot at the right time. I think that could be a tough matchup for the New York Giants, tougher than the Dallas Cowboys, if they can somehow squeak into the playoffs. The Packers are still out of the playoff picture, I believe, Uh, but with the Detroit Lions remaining schedule, it's going to come down to that last week of this season and most most likely where the Packers will take on the Lions. I expect the Packers to win that division. The Lions seem to be falling apart, but we'll see. If the New York Giants can catch a break and end up uh, keeping, 
uh, keeping the Packers out of the playoffs and having Detroit in there. We know the Giants can beat Detroit. Seattle, they have an easy schedule the rest of the way. They could get some rest. They've already cl- clinched the NFC West. We know Seattle, if they get hot in the postseason, they can make the Super Bowl. And as cliche as it sounds, defense wins championships. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the NFC. I, I It really is open. I mean, if I had to pick a team right now, I would probably pick the Dallas Cowboys because... Their defense has improved. They do a great job at controlling time of possession. Dak Prescott has had a sensational season, especially if you subtract his games against the New York Giants. He's been incredible. Uh, I think I heard on the herd this morning, if you take out the New York Giants games for the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott's completion percentage is 71%. That being said, if they end up facing the New York Giants in the divisional or the conference championship, watch out, Dallas. This is a good team, and if they match up against the Patriots, uh, this is this is a team that could get Brady fits. Now, the Patriots yesterday had a very conservative offensive approach to the Denver Broncos. They're trying to establish the run. If you have a great running game, and the Patriots have three great running backs, LeGarrette Blunt, their power back, and then Deion Lewis and James White who can play a uh, receiver in addition to halfback. I think the Patriots match up better offensively against uh, bec- because of their offensive line, because they can move the ball on the ground uh, to the New York Giants, and they did during those two Super Bowl losses. But we know, look, the Dallas Cowboys have been controlling time of possession all season. They've been pounding the football on the ground, and the New York Giants were able to stop their running game last week. And I think they could do that against the Patriots. The question is, could Eli Manning score more than 20 points against New England's defense? I don't know if Eli Manning could score more than 20 points against the Cleveland Browns right now with their offense. And he has one of the worst offensive lines uh, the Giants have had in a while, which is really saying something, because Eli's never had a great O-line. But, again, the Giants, the way they won their last two Super Bowls, was simply by having a great defense and an offense that just got by. That's how the Denver Broncos won it last year. Uh, Broncos run the ball a lot better than the Giants, but their running game's improving. If they can get that offense to at least be a middle-of-the-pack offense by the postseason and keep that defense hot, I think the Giants can make the Super Bowl. And they match up against the Patriots very well. You know Tom Brady will want that rematch. That would be fun. I think we all would be very excited about a New England Patriots, New York Giants Super Bowl Part 3. As I mentioned at this podcast... I apologize if there's some fuzzy sounds in the background. It's quite windy outside. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about Tony Romo and Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, we are entering another season, uh, 2017, the 2017 NFL season, with a weak quarterback draft class. Now, I, I know this past draft class, uh, you may not want to call it weak, but... Jared Goff has obviously been a bit of a disappointment. And Carson Wentz, we were all excited about him in the first, what, six weeks of the season. Once teams got tape on him, we saw what he really is at quarterback. I I have more hope with Carson Wentz. Uh, Really, the only surprise has been Dak Prescott, and he dropped all the way to the third round. Nobody saw that coming, and that could always happen. There could always be a quarterback somewhere in the middle or even late part of the draft that... uh, surprises everyone. Again, Tom Brady was drafted in the sixth round. It can happen. But I don't get the idea that Lamar Jackson or Deshaun Watson, they're certainly not NFL ready right now. And teams want to draft quarterbacks that they know can at least be productive right away. And there are two quarterbacks out there on the market right now. Uh, Dak Prescott, he saved his job last night. Not that I was that worried he would lose it, even if they had lost to the Bucks. 
So we know Tony Romo is going to be gone. Uh, and despite what Jerry Jones may be saying, it's wise for the Dallas Cowboys to trade Romo this offseason it, than to cut him and just let him go wherever he wants because you want to get something in return for Tony Romo. I mean, you, you want to be nice to the guy. He's been your franchise quarterback for a while now, but you might as well get something in return while you got it. Now, the real question is, what do the New England Patriots do with their uh, Tom Brady-Jimmy Garoppolo situation? I'm a believer that the Patriots are going to stick with Tom Brady because Brady's physical health has only gotten better as his career has progressed. Uh, and he says that he, he, you know, he's had some knee issues earlier in the year. He got over it. Uh, he w- went up against the best defense in the league against Baltimore just last week and tore them apart. Uh, I'm not going to... He didn't have a great game against Denver, but again, the offensive game plan was conservative, and Brady never plays well there. It's a very intimidating environment. And they shut they shut down the crowd around halftime, and that was it. The Patriots had the game won once they took the crowd out of it. But I think Brady has at least another five years. I know that sounds crazy, but Brett Favre played until his mid-40s. And he is a quarterback that relied on his athleticism quite a bit. Brady has never been an athletic quarterback. He's gotten more athletic because he's trained his body to be more mobile. He takes hits better than he did at the beginning of his career. And uh, certainly his accuracy hasn't gone anywhere. And he can throw the ball deeper. Maybe he doesn't have the same arm strength he did five years ago, but... Brady had no arm strength when he first came into the league. Um, he can still heave it downfield pretty well. So I I don't get the idea the Patriots want to go with Jimmy Garoppolo for as their franchise quarterback in the future because, I, first of all, from a marketing standpoint, it would be terrible. But I don't think Bill Belichick thinks about marketing. He thinks about winning. And he doesn't have to do anything. What's going to happen is teams are going to be calling the New England Patriots maybe a dozen teams are going to call them asking about Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason. And the Patriots, just like the uh, L.A. Rams did, just like the Philadelphia Eagles did this past offseason, there's going to be one team that's willing to give up like three years of first, second, and third round draft picks to get Jimmy Garoppolo. And what did Garoppolo do? He he won a great game against Arizona. He got injured after a strong half against the Miami Dolphins where he almost threw for 400 yards. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see him again on the field this season. If the Patriots wrap up home field next week, which I think they will, Garoppolo will probably pay, play in Miami and be showcased. Uh, but there's going to be teams calling the Patriots, and that's a defense, like I said earlier in the podcast, that's gotten better. They've been a top two or three defense just these past few weeks. But Belichick's going to want to keep building it up. He's going to want to keep drafting linebackers the way he does uh, and defensive backs, drafting versatile players. And he's going to keep trying to build up that offensive line to protect Tom Brady. Uh, NFL analysts do not talk about the Patriots' offensive line enough. It's all about Tom Brady and... They don't realize that Belichick, just these last two years, has slowly done what the Dallas Cowboys have done in the last four years. And uh, they just signed Shaq Mason to an extension. And they're going to keep replacing some of the veterans on that O-line throughout these next few seasons. And with Jimmy Garoppolo there, I think they have a chance to get five or six draft picks that can really, one keep building up that defense, and two, protect Tom Brady so he can play into his mid or potentially late 40s. So who's going to pick up Jimmy Garoppolo? Who's going to go after Tony Romo? That's the question. There's a lot of teams. I think the Arizona Cardinals, they're going to want to move on from Carson Palmer. Uh, He's getting up there in age. He hasn't been as consistent this season. They're going to look into either Romo or Garoppolo. Uh, Also, the L.A. Rams. I think the L.A. Rams would be a wise choice for Tony Romo because this is a team that's invested a lot in Jared Goff. Uh, I don't think they're going to base their head coaching hire on whether they want to work with Jared Goff or not. But if Tony Romo goes to L.A. for two years, 
that would be perfect for Goff. You know, it took Aaron Rodgers a few seasons behind Brett Favre before he took over. I think Jared Goff working behind Tony Romo, someone who's capable of calling audibles at the line, who can read NFL defenses. Jared Goff has no idea what he's doing out there. And he's not going to learn from Case Keenum. Case Keenum is still all disgruntled about losing his job. Not like we... Nobody thought Case Keenum was a great quarterback. We all know he's he's a backup level quarterback. So someone like Tony would be great for Jared Goff. Uh, then there's teams that really want to pick a quarterback for their future. These are teams that are probably more inclined to call up the New England Patriots and try to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, team that obviously comes to mind is the Cleveland Browns. They've had a ton of success with quarterbacks these last two decades. We all know that. Uh, Garoppolo would probably be a the most stable quarterback they've had in that organization since uh, I, Trent Dilfer. I don't know. Uh, when was the last great Browns quarterback? I have no idea. Uh, certainly since the, the new expansion Cleveland team, Garoppolo right away could be the best quarterback. But, again, he needs a good old line if he wants to play well. New York Jets... Uh, I don't think the Patriots are going to want to trade Garoppolo within the division, uh, but if the Jets are willing to give up a lot, they'll do anything. Why not? Same with same thing with the Buffalo Bills. You know, they're. I think it's fairly certain at this point they'll be moving on from Rex Ryan this off season. Uh, with that, perhaps they'll move on from Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, I like him. He's very athletic, uh, but he's he has a mediocre arm and his decision making isn't the best. Uh, I think he could make a great starting cornerback quarterback for another franchise with the right system, the right O line, the right running game. Uh, but I think Buffalo might look to replace their quarterback also. Uh, but look, the Patriots could get so much out of Jimmy Garoppolo. It makes sense to roll the dice uh, and keep Tom Brady for a few more years, certainly. And uh, we forget they drafted Jaco- Jacoby Brissett. Uh, who is a, is a different quarterback from Brady and Garoppolo, but uh, as a rookie, he played very well. He beat the Houston Texans on Thursday Night Football. Uh, he's a good backup to have, and he's going to keep learning from Brady. It makes all the sense in the world to trade Garoppolo this offseason. Uh, Patriots are obviously going to be quiet about it. They don't need to do anything. They just need to sit back and wait for the phone calls. So that's it for this podcast. Uh, a bit short. Again, we're doing it from the road. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back hopefully at some point later this week. Until then, I bid you adieu.